This is Dr. Charles Nemiroff at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a remarkable study that was published in the August 8, 2008 issue of Science Magazine concerning brain imaging abnormalities in patients with borderline personality disorder. I'm not going to go through all of the exact details of the study, but borderline personality disorder is a clinical state that has had tremendous controversy in our field. Because it's one of the cluster B axis 2 diagnoses, many clinicians and investigators have wondered exactly what this syndrome is all about, how valid is the diagnosis, what is it on the border of, is on the border of an axis 1 diagnosis, is it on the borderline of psychosis and that old term neurosis, and most importantly, how do we understand these patients? There have been a number of psychoanalytic theories about borderline personality disorder. There have also been in more recent years a number of biological studies of borderline personality disorder. Very clearly, these patients are difficult to manage. They tend to have uh, uh, an extraordinary uh, amount of difficulty in interpersonal relationships. Uh, including their relationship with their uh, primary mental health provider. All of us have had the experience of having patients with borderline personality disorder uh, repeatedly try to contact our office, obtain appointments when appointments weren't available, uh, try to contact us outside of the office, uh, and in general these patients are overly dramatic, they often engage in self-mutilatory uh, behaviors, and clearly they're in a great deal of, of pain. <clears throat> there are in fact many clinicians that simply won't treat patients with borderline personality disorder. From a biological point of view, there's considerable evidence that patients with borderline personality disorder have um, abnormal neuroendocrine responses similar to what's been seen in some depressed patients. In, a, in, in particular, there is a blunted prolactin response to a variety of serotonergic uh, provocative stimuli in patients with borderline personality disorder. The best treatment for these patients, either psychotherapeutically or psychopharmacologically, has is, is certainly been a subject of great debate. And in addition, uh, this, this particular diagnostic entity really led to the development of dialectical behavior therapy developed by Marsha Linehan, uh, uh, who is in Washington State, um, and this certainly uh, has been a helpful uh, addition to the armamentarium. So what about these patients that one of my colleagues once described as a sponge with thorns, patients who um, will uh, develop tremendous close relationships with those around them, but then be very hurtful for them. Another way to describe these patients has been that they, they really engage in dichotomous thinking. You're either the very best psychiatrist or psychologist or social worker they've ever met, or the absolute worst. And of course, all of their relationships are uh, characterized uh, by this kind of uh, dichotomous thinking. There's not much room for gray uh, with these patients. So what this remarkable study uh, by King Cassis and colleagues is a collaboration from investigators at Baylor College of Medicine uh, in Texas as well as at uh, uh, investigators in London and Chicago. What they did was to use uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging in order to characterize uh, uh, particular brain areas in these patients. Uh, unlike structural brain imaging, this is looking at neural activation of particular regions. And they studied 55 patients with borderline personality disorder and 38 normal volunteers. And they used a relatively sophisticated paradigm, uh, uh, which has uh, been used in a great many studies in cognitive neuroscience. And their, their results focus on a brain area called the anterior insula. Now the anterior insula is an important area because it has been shown in the past to be very much involved in uh, social interaction, social biology if you will, and also um, in a seminal study published a year or two ago, uh, results 
demonstrated that uh, if you are watching an individual, a loved one of yours, in an experimental paradigm in which they're being exposed to some discomfort or pain, that your anterior insula actually is activated. So the results of this study are very germane to those findings. This paradigm essentially uh, is a measure of trust and social cooperation, and in the paradigm that these investigators used, the healthy volunteers and the borderline personality disordered patients were, were essentially scanned as they responded to various cues in this relationship uh, in which uh, money was being exchanged in, in the form of investment. And it involved a great deal of trust, it involved a great deal of coaxing on the part of the invest investor uh, uh, to try to get the subject in order to, to invest money. And to make a very long story short, the relationship between the uh, amount of money invested uh, uh, by the subject, the potential return, the trust between the two individuals was very predictable in the healthy volunteers. But in the patients with borderline personality disorder, their anterior insular responses were clearly abnormal and disordered. And this coupled with the findings I described earlier about the anterior insula really suggests uh, something that many of us have intuitively known in patients with severe borderline personality disorder, namely that their ability to perceive good and bad in individuals accurately and to trust is, is markedly disrupted, whether this is due to a genetic predisposition, the consequences of early life experience, uh, or temperament uh, certainly is, is worth exploring. But the anterior uh, insular is clearly an area uh, that uh, is critically involved uh, in this pathological state. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to you joining us again uh, for another program on topics in psychiatry. Thank you.